if we have a class full of students and we want to take attendance it would be nice to use the iteration process, the circular reference that we learned in the previous lesson to be able to record the time that they arrived in class. To do this we need to have a class list that is a set of names and a unique ID number. I've got some ID numbers here that are the same as the student IDs that uh, the students have on their student badges. When they come into class we can take their ID number and enter the information in and it gives us a timestamp for each of the people as they are entering which is quite nice. It's also possible to use a barcode scanner to be able to read the information that they have from their barcodes. Now the barcodes could be on the ID card that they have or you could print them yourself and put them on the cover of a handbook or some sort of workbook that you've given them. We have an example here of a student handbook that has a barcode on it. We're going to scan that number and on scanning it we receive the ID number. Now uh, any number that you have in the name list under the ID number is used as the reference and we have a second column which has the information that we're wanting to bring through which is the actual set of names. So we have an entry field here which is going to take in our number in this case it was 2301 pop that in again it's brought up a number again beside it and the person's name. Now we have a system whereby if we record the number twice by accident uh, we're just going to do a conditional lookup and say oh we've got a duplicate value there we'll highlight that so we know we should take that out so we can go back and put somebody else's number in. The barcodes that I found that had been issued by the institution had a letter at the end appended to the end of the number. Um, so what I've done is I've created a system that will remove any letters that are at the end. So for example if I have 000 um, 1 2 3 and then let's put a B at the end there you'll see that it's removed the, the leading part because they are just the number 1 2 3 and it's also taken the letter off the end. If I just had 1 2 3 and B it hasn't taken it off the end. What's going on is it's counting to see how long it actually is and if it's long because of all these extra zeros in the front then it takes the letter off. So that's just a simple uh, system that I've put in to be able to correct the entry number depending on how the number has been put into my system. Let's remove those so they're back to the ones that we are working with. Let's use an example of 0000, 000, 000 uh, zero, 06 and we'll have C in this case and it's turned it into 6 removed the C and given me my correct name number 6 Bob Jones here. Now all of these cells are locked at the moment so that uh, as I move and put new numbers in it moves down this particular column. Let's unprotect the sheet and we'll have a look at what's going on. Now in this cell here we've just got a simple if statement and if this is empty then we're going to do nothing but if it's not empty then we're going to check the length and if the length here is longer than 6 because uh, our institutional ones tend to be quite long uh, when it, uh, it generates lots of zeros if it's longer than 6 in this case it's saying well take one off the end and that's giving me my raw figure. So the, if you don't have a problem with that then you can just be working on the first column otherwise you can have some calculation to tidy up the number that you use as your reference number. And then we have to actually go and find the information and this is where we're using a VLOOKUP. So my IF statement now is saying go and have a look at B5 and if B5 is empty well don't bother doing anything because there's nothing to do. But if it's not empty then we're going to do a VLOOKUP. Now VLOOKUP is uh, a useful and easy to use way of referencing our second sheet here 
getting information and bringing it through. If you're not familiar with VLOOKUP, the Excel Help has quite a good explanation for what we are working with. We're using a lookup value, well in this case B5, so we're going to check this particular entry here, and then we're going to go to the name list, which is my second sheet here called name list, and we're looking for a range. So we've got a, a table array that's specified a specific set of values in my name list that it's going to look for. And it then wants to check in column two of that set in the table array uh, for the information it wants to bring through that it's going to match. The false here is just to make sure that it will only pick up the value if it's exactly the same and it doesn't move on to any other value that it might find uh, if it doesn't find the exact value and we leave it as true or we don't put false here it'll choose the next larger number and give that information which would be the incorrect name so we don't want that so we're going to use false in here so let's just close that box and we'll come and have a look so it's looking in column B here to get my value so let's come back to the time so our VLOOKUP is just looking up a name. Now the only other thing that we were doing here was that we were putting in a conditional formatting just in case we get both of the same values turning up. So uh, within this column here uh, we're looking for a conditional formatting, a very simple procedure. What we want to know is we're going to highlight cells if they have a duplicate value. So these two fives are the same so they're being highlighted. So a very simple way of finding out whether you've got a duplicate happening in there. So that's a simple attendance system whereby you can use VLOOKUP to take either a straight manually entered ID number or a barcode scanned ID number and generate both a timestamp and the person's name by using VLOOKUP from a list that's within your institutional spreadsheet.